This is the Satechi external SSD enclosure. And this is the WD Black 850X SSD drive. I recently purchased these and spent weeks doing research on the best options and pricing out the difference so that you don't have to. In this video, I will dive into those options. So if you've recently ran out of storage or are looking for a new Mac and don't want to break the bank, then this video is for you. Now that you know what to expect, let's discuss the pros and cons of both options. And let's start with SSDs. One, external SSDs are more cost effective than trying to purchase a similar upgrade from Apple or their website. Later in this video, I will cover the cost of a one terabyte drive from external SSDs versus the internal Apple upgrade. Two, external SSDs are plug and play, unlike SSD enclosures, and require no technical skills to figure out specs and compatibility between SSDs and enclosures. Three, external SSDs are portable, and many times you can find one that fits in your pocket nice and easy. On the flip side, if you are looking for an SSD enclosure, they have their own list of pros. One, external enclosures provide extreme flexibility. Not only do you get to choose the SSD brand and the level of performance you want to buy, you can also pick the size and style of the enclosure. 2. Upgradability is also a big pro for SSD enclosures. At first, you might have to spend a little upfront to buy the enclosure, but once you have the enclosure, upgrading the actual SSD will be much cheaper than trying to buy a normal external SSD of the same size. 3. Like external SSDs, an SSD enclosure is going to be a more cost-effective alternative than upgrading your internal storage. Four, finally, performance is a big key here. You can get faster speeds than the best external SSDs. Now that we know the pros of external SSDs and SSD enclosures, let's look at the cons. One, nothing is quite as nice as using an internal drive because it's not an additional piece of hardware that you have to carry. And even when it's small, it's still using up one of your ports. Two, while SSDs are faster than traditional physical drives, they are still slower than the internal drive. So if you are a pro's pro and have heavy, heavy data workflows and complicated encoded files, this option may not be for you. Now finally, let's go ahead and discuss the options that I have done my research on and do recommend for this video. If you are able to work with slower speeds because the application and workflow you will be working with are not demanding, then you can go for the Samsung T7 or the Crucial X9 Pro, both of which will get you around 1000 megabits per second. For more pro workflows, we have four options which should get you closer to 2000 megabits per second. One, the Samsung T9. The Samsung T9 will give you speeds up to 2000 megabits per second and will cost you $130 as of the recording of this video for a one terabyte SSD, saving you over $270 over Apple's base upgrade for a non-pro model and $70 for a pro model. Two, the Crucial X10. This will give you speeds up to 2100 megabits per second and will cost you 105 as of the recording of this video for a one terabyte SSD, saving you $295 over Apple's base upgrade and over $495 for a two terabyte update. Three, the Lazy Rugged Pro. This claim speeds up to 2800 megabits per second and will cost you $203 for a one terabyte SSD, saving you $197 over Apple's base upgrade. Four, Western Digital P40. Now, although this is for gaming, this will give you speeds up to 2000 megabits per second and will cost you $130 for a one terabyte SSD, saving you over $270 over Apple's upgrade. If I were to pick one of these, I would pick the Crucial X10 as it is extremely small, very affordable, and gives you extremely great performance for the price. Now, moving on to SSD enclosures. This section is broken down into two parts, the actual SSD and the enclosure. Let's start with the SSD. You cannot go wrong with Samsung or Western Digital, but I also want to give an honorable mention to the Crucial P3 Plus. For the enclosures, there are two names that ring bells on YouTube, the Acacius Enclosure and the Satechi Enclosure, which is the one that I purchased. The Acacius Enclosures will run you $90 as of the filming of this video, and the Satechi will run you $119. As you have seen earlier in this video, I have chosen the WD SSD and the Satechi Enclosure. I bought the Western Digital 2TB SSD on Amazon for $167.98, 
And I also got the enclosure on Amazon for $128.39, $119 advertised price. The total is $296.37. I decided to purchase this combination after watching a video from Craig Nidal. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You can find the link to his video in the description below. He was estimating that he was getting about 3300 megabits per second for a 100 gigabyte transfer with mixed content. This video was inspired by that. He asked the question, if someone were to buy the 850 with this same enclosure, what kind of speeds they would get? So this is what I was looking to answer in this video, but also just providing myself with the ability to edit videos offline because my libraries were getting extremely huge. I was able to get 3200 megabits per second on my MacBook Pro Max using his calculations on 125 gigabyte transfer. Now keep in mind, this was straight video for the most part. It was a Final Cut Pro library with a bunch of videos and a lot of 120 frames per second files. So that could have prevented me from getting higher speeds given that I did upgrade the Western Digital. Also, it is harder for these hard drives to sustain the speeds the more data that you do transfer. Before I forget, let me mention to say that I did format this with Apple's Journal to APFS format. If you do this, you are going to get the faster results. If you try to mix this with something like XFAT so that you can have compatibility with Windows machines, you are not going to get the best performance out of these drives. Now, let's go ahead and summarize. If you are someone who is just doing regular editing of any types of applications, things like Microsoft or applications of that level, I would recommend that you get an external drive like the Samsung T7 or the Crucial X9. These will both allow you to work on your computer with normal workflows for the type of things that you will likely be doing when you are using your computer with these external drives. Now, once again, like I mentioned before in this video, if you have more complex workflows or you need more intensive apps, maybe you're using Final Cut Pro or some sort of music editing software, anything that is considered pro level software, then you're probably going to want to build your own NVMe enclosure. These are going to provide you with the types of performance that you will likely need. And that is exactly what I'm doing. I am editing off of my external drive and I build my own SSD enclosure. The ones that I would recommend is as far as the SSDs, you can grab some of the Samsung Pros or you can grab the Western Digital 750 or if you want a little better performance, grab the 850 and X. Now, let's not forget that Crucial also provides a great option here if that's something that you want to consider and it's actually more affordable than the other two. For the enclosures, as I mentioned, I would recommend the Acasis NVMe 40 gigabit enclosure or the Satechi enclosure that I have purchased for this video and I am using and I will be editing this video with. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to use the options that I recommended in this video. What I would recommend there is to just make sure you do your research, find the proper SSD that you think is going to provide the performance that you need, and then find an enclosure that works well with that to actually give you everything out of that SSD in terms of performance. I do hope I was able to provide some sort of information to help you make a decision about which direction to go in, as well as maybe save a few bucks so that Apple isn't killing you with the internal SSD upgrades. I will allow YouTube to recommend some videos. So these are the videos that YouTube is going to recommend from you. Please subscribe. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.